What's up guys, today I wanted to go ahead and do a kind of an end of the year review of the old flagship marketplace. And guys, I was really impressed this year. We got a lot of really great deals. A lot of the comments uh, this year have been really positive. A lot of people have really been uh, thanking me for, you know, just sort of opening their mind to just a different perspective. Uh, you know, not having to upgrade, you know, every single year or not having to spend a ton of money, especially if you live in the Western marketplace. I know it is definitely different if you live overseas. A lot of these older phones are much, much more expensive. So I definitely understand that. Um, but I feel like I've been able to throw out a lot of great options for uh, you guys this year. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about just some of my favorite phones this year. Like I've said in many videos, the S21 Ultra is the phone that I would get if I didn't have, you know, any phone and I wanted to get into the used smartphone marketplace. It really has aged extremely well. I just did a video uh, on this phone not too long ago with the Android 6 uh, update. And thanks to Samsung, this phone will be getting the Android 15 update and security patches after that. So the phone is going to have a pretty good uh, lifespan as well too and it's just aged really well I think this is one of the most comfortable uh, phones to hold still a really good design a lot of people uh, forget this phone does have S Pen support as well too so it really has everything you could want a really beautiful display the chipset is just super fast on here it still uh, plays games and pretty much anything you throw at it and yeah it's just been a really really good experience and crazy crazy good cameras uh, on here as well too really good zoom a quality on this phone as well too um, yeah you just it just feels like a really good deal for uh, now under 400 bucks and what makes these phones really good and, and I want to talk about this the old flagship marketplace is going to get even better uh, for the years to come because of this phone right here the pixel 8 pro now it's not an old flagship but what Google did which I think a lot of smartphone makers are going to have to compete with this is they're going to have to give us at least seven years of major OS updates uh, like they do for the Pixel 8 Pro. So Google announced that uh, with this phone. I think Samsung is actually going to up theirs. They, are, they already went four years, but I think Samsung is going to try to compete with Google and eventually we're going to see these phones have longer lifespan. So that's pretty much the biggest complaint uh, from a lot of people is that these phones don't have or are not getting updates and stuff like that um, or they have sort of a short lifespan as far as major OS updates. I think uh, with Samsung and Google sort of uh, leading the way in terms of increasing updates, I think that's going to change actually. Another phone that was pretty popular this year is the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, probably one of the most popular phones on the channel now. And a lot of people still really love this phone, and for good reason. Um, it's got, you know, now the Snapdragon 865 chip is an older chip but it's still just crazy good performer but what's strange about this phone in particular is that for an Android phone it's maintained its value uh, pretty well and the price actually went up a bit so the phone was you know trending around like three hundred and fifty dollars I think at the beginning or middle of the this year and then all of a sudden um, it just went up to four hundred thirty dollars um, so what's interesting about this phone is that it's not getting any more major OS updates its last major OS update was the One UI 5.1 update and now it's just getting security patches but what a lot of people like about this phone is that it still pretty much has everything that a uh, you know S23 Ultra would have as far as flagship features uh, but this phone has SD card support and that is a feature that a lot of people like like it's actually uh, surprised me as well too I didn't think that this phone would be like this popular just because of SD card support so it's just really interesting I wonder if Samsung uh, would take note of that uh, you still have SD card support in their phones it's just not on the flagship phones anymore but a lot of people want that flagship experience with you know they want it with you know a flagship phone basically and um, yeah this phone it still has the S Pen which feels really nice built into it. The display on here is gorgeous. It's a 1440p display. Even though the display on here it can't do 120 hertz at 1440p, can only do it at 1080p. Yeah guys, so this phone is aging really well. Like I said, cameras are pretty solid on here as well too. Um, the design on here I think still looks pretty decent. Uh, but it's just a fantastic phone like it almost has pretty much no flaws I think the battery life is just kinda okay on here it's not too crazy but this is a really good device and a lot of people like it I think um, one of the most impressive phones to me in the older flagship marketplace 
uh, was the iPhone 12 for its price of um, let me go ahead and unlock it for its price of you know 300 bucks I think if you are, you are somebody who wants an iOS device uh, this is a pretty impressive device the screen on here is really nice uh, it's an OLED display and the design on here still looks fairly modern as well too really it basically looks like like an iPhone 14 15 just change the cameras around it still has that boxy feel uh, to it as well that kind of like sharp edges on it um, and yeah it's a really nice device um, the chipset on here is also really fast as well too so it just feels you know pretty much like a the newest iPhones I think the only thing that kind of makes this phone and it's probably not even really that big of a deal but uh, this one doesn't have any type of high refresh rate you I kind of feel it when I when I pick it up like coming from like a 120 Hertz phone uh, but the CPU on here is really good like I said it's priced really well beautiful hardware beautiful cameras I still think the iPhones have some of the best video as well too so if you take a lot of video want to get a content creation uh, the the video quality on these iPhones even the older ones are pretty good and uh, yeah so I'm, I'm always really impressed with the cameras uh, on on these phones uh, but yeah very impressive phone guys uh, for you know just this 2023 for a good price uh, as well too really good speakers so there's not a lot of things that I don't like about this phone at this price point actually alright so I do want to talk about the pixel phones this year they have been extremely impressive um, honestly these are still going to be the best phones to buy if you are somebody who is on a budget and you want to take the best steals easily regardless of which phone you get the pixel 6 pro the pixel 7 pro uh, you're going to get some beautiful photos um, still I think taking some of the best photos up there with the latest flagship phones even the pixel uh, 8 pro these phones still take you know very similar pictures to that phone so if you're looking for like top notch quality stills I think they even take better stills in my opinion than the Samsung phones when it comes to video and stuff like that I'm a I like to use the pixel 7 pro I use it a lot to film all the YouTube shorts with but I did run into problems with overheating and stuff like that uh, that is one of the things that uh, these phones might you might run into an issue with is these phones kind of heated up a little bit uh, they're not really gaming phones and stuff like that they're not super powerful phones um, I think for the average person like you know if you see my videos on these two phones uh, gaming performance and stuff like that is, is, is decent like you can get away with PUBG but you won't be able to play at 90 frames and stuff like that and like I said sometimes these things will you know overheat and stuff like that as well too like I've never had these phones overheat on me and uh, crash but I've had had um, them like especially the 7 Pro it get warm especially if it's like a, a hot day outside and it'll just you know get warm and flash on vacation then you'll get worse video quality besides that these are awesome phones that run stock Android and you get you're the first to get the the new Android updates so when Android 15 comes out uh, you know the Pixel 7 Pro you'll be first to test out the beta uh, software um, so these are some awesome devices beautiful displays like I said silky smooth animations top-notch top-tier cameras I really like these phones for anybody who's really into photography you take a lot of pictures you will absolutely love the pixel software um, I do want to touch on the iPhone 11 so it's a, been a pretty interesting phone and the phone is fine uh, like I said it's at a really good price of like 250 bucks you can actually find these new uh, on lock carriers um, but um, it's an interesting phone like I said 250 bucks you can get an iPhone uh, 12 which I was you know trying to stress in the video I did about this phone not a bad phone it has an LCD display which a lot of people like um, which display looks fine like I said this design is actually a lot more comfortable than the newer iPhone designs and it's actually still fairly fast as well too it's not really a slow phone by any means surprisingly like I said I just would especially if you live in the USA I would definitely just take that extra money and just get an iPhone 12 I think you'll be much happier it's gonna get more updates and um, like I said it's not super expensive the iPhone 12 it's around that $300 price point um, but yeah so I like the iPhone 11 I think it's aging pretty well especially for a phone that came out in what like 2019 um, it's still doing pretty good it still takes somewhat decent photos um, not a bad phone uh, by any means um, but like I said it is getting up there and it probably has one or two more uh, iOS updates like I said not a bad phone at all I was actually pretty impressed when I revisited uh, this phone uh, it's still running iOS 17 right now and yeah I was I was pretty impressed for 
uh, the most part with the the quality of the of this phone still it's still pretty good still a decent gamer as well too and I was getting some questions about the 10s guys uh, I probably wouldn't get the 10s is probably not gonna get iOS 18 it got iOS 17 so I probably wouldn't get in that I'd be surprised if it did but I don't think it is so I, I, the only reason I like this phone is that I know overseas uh, the iPhone 12 is way cost way more in overseas market so I would say if you really want an iPhone for cheap the iPhone 11 is still a good buy but if you live in like Western marketplace you're probably better off getting uh, the 12 also a really impressive phone this year was the LG V60 still kind of been a league of its own it has pretty much like a cult following which I see why it's still extremely impressive guys you, you still have pin support on here dual screen case support headphone jack with a quad deck uh, you have the dual case support um, LG gave this phone Android 13 this year and it's been super smooth buttery smooth this year but that's it it's not getting any more updates you know LG stopped making phones it's a really well solid built phone with pretty good cameras it still plays games really well as well too um, you know PUBG and everything Call of Duty still works extremely well on this phone with the Snapdragon A65 chip it is a really impressive phone it has micro SD card support it has legitimately everything like a power user will want uh, in it so very very impressive phone this year kind of sad to see LG you know go away uh, but at least they delivered on the Android 13 promise I would say you know I would buy this phone as probably like a backup phone uh, since it's not going to get any more type of updates but you can still pretty much use this as a as a main phone still guys I mean it's still really really impressive very impressive phone this year and also a good alternative to the a good alternative to the Note 20 Ultra, which a lot of people can't afford, is the S20 Ultra, which a lot of people forget about. Um, it does not have any built-in S Pen support, of course, but this phone is also 6.9 inches, and it is extremely comfortable to hold compared to the Note 20 Ultra. And um, it still has the same kind of issue with the display not being able to run 120 hertz at 1440p, but it plays PUBG really well. It's super powerful, has SD card support. Like I said, you can play PUBG at 90 frames, way more comfortable to hold. So basically, it's a you know a Note 20 Ultra without with a slight design change and you know no SD card support, but really good. And you also have the 100 times zoom on here. Uh, the cameras are still pretty good on the S20 Ultra. Um, this phone did suffer from like focusing issues, especially when it first came out. This has that really cool 100 times zoom on here as well too. Um, but the the photo quality is still pretty good on the S20 Ultra. This is also another phone that got the um, you know when you are 5.1 update and that was it so it's only getting security patches as well and then the s21 phones are still really solid to buy uh, you know basically s21 plus uh, here is also a really good buy this phone gonna get Android 15 extremely cheap as well too you can find these for like 200 bucks uh, the most impressive phone this year uh, to me was actually the uh, S21 FE and I'll give you guys my reason why this phone not only is going to get Android um, 15 it's also going to get Android 16 since it launched with Android 12 so this is a very impressive phone absolutely love this phone has the Snapdragon 888 really nice design on here as well too kind of has that uh, soft matte finish it is a plastic bag but it has the metal rails I was really impressed with this phone especially when it got the Android 6 update I thought it was pretty smooth and um, yeah, it plays games pretty well. It um, just does a lot of stuff really well. It takes really good pictures. Beautiful design on here still. Um, this is a really good phone. And the crazy thing about this phone is crazy cheap. Like 200 bucks cheap. Especially in the Western marketplace. It is ridiculously cheap. And like I said, this is a phone you can keep for a very long time. Because it's going to get two more major OS updates. And it'll get uh, the security patches after that it's just it just blows my mind how good this phone is uh, good battery life good display it is very impressive um, also another phone that if you have like 400 bucks I try to keep this I try to keep like you know I don't want to introduce like phones that cost five hundred dollars because I know that's out of people's budget like you know five six hundred dollars like you know something like the iPhone 13 Pro stuff like that that are older that costs a lot. The S22 Plus is really impressive on this year. Excellent flagship grade quality cameras. Honestly, pretty much still takes photos like an S23. 
um, beautiful display on here as well too. You get the nice modern design on here as well too. This phone is a little bit pricier, you know, again at that $400, but I think it's worth it. You're going to get updates for a pretty long time. Beautiful display. Uh, you get the newer processor, I believe Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor. Uh, it is a crazy good chipset uh, on here. Crazy fast, beautiful display. Um, I just really love this phone in particular. And like I said, really, really good cameras on here uh, as well too. And it's going to get updates for a very long time as well. Uh, another phone that I think kind of flew below the radar this year, the S20 FE. Um, and again, it's it's pretty cheap. You can find these actually under 200. It has SD card support. It, it's also got that Android One UI 5.1 update. Um, it's a really good phone. The Note 20, the Note 10 Plus. Now this phone isn't getting any more updates, but I did an updated video about it. It's still extremely impressive, guys. You can find this for dirt cheap uh, these days. And yeah, I, I mean, if you have this phone, I would just keep it, right? until you feel like you need to update because I did a revisit of this phone it still plays games well it's the design still looks really great really modern design cameras are pretty good I mean this is still an awesome phone and it has SD card support which again a lot of people like they don't want to give that up um, but like I said it's not getting any more updates uh, no security updates nothing um, but still an excellent buy so yeah, I think the old flagship marketplace, guys, I think it's just going to get even better uh, if we get longer updates. Because as we can see, when I did my revisit, even on the oldest chip here, the 855, it still was able to play most of the games, pretty much all the games in the Play Store, Call of Duty, PUBG. Um, it's still able to play emulators. The, we see what the A65 is able to do. It's you know, identical to the newest phones in terms of the casual user. Um, it's just really impressive this year. So I think once we get longer updates, um, it'll be a no-brainer to buy uh, an older flagship, guys. Um, so what do you guys think? Be sure to let me know, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.